Um, there is one thing we can touch on is, I mean, I'm sure you know, but you know what unknown is, right? Unknown is, uh, hmm, well, it's like any, but with any, it like allows you to access like properties and then type strip things. Okay, might be fine, but with unknown, you have to like first wait to check and on, only then. Like you have to check, oh, is this a number? And only then unknown becomes a number. Exactly. While with any, it could be a number and TypeScript says, okay, it could be a number. I don't throw an error. Exactly. So, you know, you've seen this meme before, right? And it's so accurate, right? So you have your TypeScript code, everything is statically checked, and then you have any, which can potentially destroy everything. And I've experienced it, I'm sure you did too. And before unknown, you had to use any in, in, in some cases. And um, yeah, and unknown does exactly what you, instead of saying it's any type, we say we don't know the type. So for instance, if I do, so we use it for instance right here because it doesn't matter what is the type of uh, T. So we, we say unknown instead of any. And so if I do, let's say, let's do a function as an example to describe exactly the use case you, you gave. So we can have a parameter, so let's say input, instead of, so let's do any. So any, we should never use any, so implicit any should be false. And now that we have unknown, I think that's uh, the construct that enables us to get rid of any altogether. Um, so we, if we have any, I can do, let's say, pass int of input. And of course, it's not going to complain because um, input can be a number. It's all the types at the same time, right? And then probably I can do here, even though it's assumed it's a number, I can probably do input dot to lowercase. It's not going to complain either, right? Right. So and now I can do. It's definitely a bug, though. That's definitely a bug, exactly. So now I can switch it to a none. So it's a none, so it's not a thing about to number, and I can do exactly like you said, type of input equals a string. And now input is of type string. So this works. And here I can do maybe input plus 10, I don't know, which should complain, but then I can do else if type of input equals number. And now A is of type number. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, the the funny thing is that even though using any is so bad, it's like not <laughs> not any worse than just using JavaScript. Yes. <laughs> um and then there is a trick which I think you probably know. Yeah I think you know, but so these things here what if you have a complex type, right? So you could do is a string. And then you can do is a string. So you have input, which is also unknown, right? Because you're going to do some validation. Right. And then oh, you see how it auto-completed it automatically. Oh, yes. wow. You, you, you've never Wait. seen this before? <laughs> no, I guess I'm missing out. <laughs> this one is so cool because Basically, you know, okay, it's nice like to do type of input equals number, but it only works for a few primitives. So here, it works for any complex types, and you can do any runtime validation. So string, and now yeah, input is of type string. Oh, this one is is great. Very nice. So this is the tab nine extension, which uh, did this. That auto completed it, yes, but this, yeah, this is a TypeScript feature where you can say input. If this oh function yeah, returns right. true, input is of type uh, string. Yes, very nice. Uh, and I, I, another use case I could imagine, like if you say that I want uh, to assert that it's like a string constant, like that it's exactly this string, you could also using using these type exactly. Assertions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like maybe is. Uh, CSS property or something. 
and here you have maybe as an input a string. Oh yeah. And then I don't know. I'm gonna say it's flex start or flex. No, yeah. I don't know. I think it's it's pretty cool. Um, so that's unknown. Uh, what about do you know about never? Yeah, never. It's uh. It's <laughs> if if it's never, then it's like always a bug. I feel, but maybe uh, not. Yeah, so kind of. So yeah, tell me about never. So it, it's yeah, it's a cool uh, type because basically now there are types which cannot exist, and this is represented within a type uh, which is called never, and it's actually very very practical. So just let me show you an example. My favorite, um, so let's say we have a type A, which is uh, well, I don't know, one or two. And then you have a switch. Or even let's do with a if else. So OK, so we have A or is of type A, and I don't know, assign one. So we can do if A equals one, we do something. If so, a here is of type one, I guess. Yeah, a equals Makes two. Sense. We do something else. So here, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay. That's wait a second. Okay, so no, so but this is <laughs> <laughs> it what? works in unexpected ways, but I guess it makes sense. You. You said A is 1 and it's constant, and therefore it's smart enough to assign it a type 1, which is even more strict. So TypeScript has just outsmarted your demo, kind of. It, yeah, that's, ex <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Because it knows that A, no, but uh, OK. It knows that A is 1, basically, right? So it's basically telling me this is not possible. So if I would do oh. 2 here. Wow, this is getting uh, <laughs> very <laughs> deep. <laughs> but but yeah, that was not the demo I wanted to show. Let me. <laughs> but this is cool. Okay. You see, it shows you the code path which cannot happen, in essentially, yes, statically. So, <laughs> I mean, but it, it's good that it was like actually more smart than than we wanted it to be. Yes. So yeah, you can do like math that random is bigger than zero point five and ternary is two else one. Something like that. Uh, let me do A is type string. Oh, I, yeah, maybe I can check. But so it's A or B. Or what you could do is you could, instead of const, you could use let. I think that then it's not going to assume that it's exactly what you Ooh. start it at. No. No, I think it's the same, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, huh? Or let me do. And then what or if can you I reassign it? What if you say a equals one? Billion? No, but I don't assign it. That's one way to do it. No. Oh right. Uh, use this. This is too smart. Oh. This is too smart for us. But let's do maybe with string. Uh, so a. But then I'm sure you know it somehow. So let's say if I do B. Come on. Okay, so now what what if you on line three say A equals B? Then we should have confused TypeScript enough that it will now No way. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting crazy. This is not the demo I wanted to do, but uh let's do if I do declare <laughs> variable. Uh now can I do this? Declare. I want a variable without, you know, like it's like a dynamic value, and I don't. Uh, yeah, so like one that's coming from the outside. Yeah, I think you can do declare declare const a colon a. Yes, that seems good. Yes. Exactly. And now, so this is good. And now a here is of type never because it's neither A or B. And so you can do this in a switch. 
So we switch on A. So we have case A. If we do something, you have case B. Oops. You do something. And then you have default. So now A is of type never. And, and so you should never, at runtime, you should never get into the default, right? Right. So here so you can. So of course you can like use any to, uh, to make to confuse TypeScript. But from a type saf safety standpoint, if the types are correct, in this case it should never reach a default value. Yes. So look, but you want also an error if you forgot to handle B. So here, if I forgot to handle B, I get no, no error, right? But now I can do in default exhaustive check. And I get as an argument, never. So if I don't get never as an argument, it means I didn't handle the case. And if right. I get never, it means everything is good. So exhaustive check. So here I'm going to create an, an, a function which checks never as parameter. Oh, interesting. Uh, input. And it totally makes sense that you still do like a default statement. Because from a type safety standpoint, this will never be called. But you never know what happens at runtime. Absolutely. Uh, one use case is Redux, where you have uh, a, a particular type of action. So maybe for one component, but then you know your reducer receives all the actions of the whole app. And so you have a switch uh, case for all the actions of your um, particular component, but at runtime, and which is typed as you know actions of these components, but at runtime it's receiving all the actions. Uh, so here, if this function is called at runtime, we can throw an error because it means something something went wrong. Something is not matching the runtime and the. Oh, you can do whatever, but it's okay. I throw an error, and now if I remove case B, your your code won't compile. So if you forgot oh, to handle a particular case. Oh, nice. So it's cool. It's, so now, even on a type level, it like warrants you that you probably did something wrong. Yes. That's nice. So unknown, never, super practical. I find them, I use them uh, quite regularly. Then there is another one which I <laughs> never used, <laughs> void. Void. Yes. <laughs> oh. Void, I mean, there's also like the void keyword in JavaScript. Yeah, I didn't even know that this was a keyword in JavaScript. I. So I started using void actually. So in use so effect. Oh no. Okay, well, go ahead. Okay, so let's say I have a callback and I have or like I have a prop like on press or like a some callback like on animation is done, but in this instance where I'm using the component, I don't want to do anything. But I still don't mark the callback as optional because I want more type safety. So basically, I want to create a function that does nothing. And if I just create an empty arrow function, then ESLint, my ESLint configuration will tell me you have an empty arrow function. And uh, I guess if I just put void zero, then it doesn't do that. Um, exactly. So, so this is sometimes where I use it. Also, I have another ESLint rule where every function must have an explicit return type. Ah, okay. So, for example, a sleep promise um, doesn't return anything. It would just say await sleep 1000. Um, but because of this ESLint plugin, I mark it with the return type promise void. Yes. And which is equivalent to undefined, but uh, that makes it uh, uh, more, yeah, but just more explicit, nicer. No, I agree. So yeah, that's exactly what the void keyword does. So it's a type, and it's also a keyword in Java. Uh, yeah, a keyword or an operator in JavaScript. And for the arrow function, it's very convenient, especially in use effect, because if you return, so let's say if I do use effect, I mean here I'm not within a component, but here maybe you do fetch. So then it thinks because this returns a promise, it thinks that uh, this is the unsubscribe, oh, yeah. where I think if you do void now, it's not, now this function returns undefined. And so React, um, 
is like, yeah, that's fine, uh, which is cool. And then as a type, yeah, I think the only use case, I've never used it, but I think the only use case is to uh, type mark a function as not returning anything. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Awesome.